What's good, R&B squad? This is Out of Roof. I trust that this message meets you guys in good spirits. If you're new to this family, we don't believe that you're here by accident. Welcome. We're happy to have you, and Jesus is, of course, always happier. So I have a word that comes from a song that the Lord placed on my heart. And as per usual, as you listen, you'll know whether or not it applies to your situation. If some things apply to your situation and some things don't, you all know how we do it here. Eat the meat, spit out the bone, take what's for you, and leave the rest. So this song, I'm familiar with the reggae version of this song. I never heard the original version. But recently, the original version started following me around, like literally following me around. This car went by, and they were playing this song really loudly. And then I was out someplace, and I heard it again. And then it just randomly popped up in the YouTube view suggestions all by itself without me even looking for it. So the title is Don't Expect Me to Be Your Friend and the original version is by an artist named Lobo. I do not know if that's how to pronounce that man's name. If you know how to pronounce it, please let me know in the comments, but it sure looks like it's Lobo. And I'm not sure about the year it was released either, but I will get right into the lyrics and then break them down as I go along. So again, this is don't expect me to be your friend. I stopped sending flowers to your apartment. You said you aren't at home much anymore. I stopped dropping by without an appointment because I'd hear laughter coming through your door. Sometimes late at night, you still call me just before you close your eyes to sleep. You make me vow to try and stop by sometime, but baby, that's a promise I can't keep. I love you too much to ever start liking you, so let's just let the story kinda end. I love you too much to ever start liking you, so don't expect for me to be your friend. I don't walk down through the village or other places that we used to go to all the time. I'm trying to erase you from my memory because thinking of you jumbles up my mind. I love you too much to ever start liking you, so let's just let the story kinda end. I love you too much to ever start liking you, so don't expect for me to be your friend. You always act so happy when I see you. You smile that way, you take my hand and then introduce me to your latest lover. That's when I feel the walls start crashing in. I love you too much to ever start liking you, so let's just let the story kind of end. I love you too much to ever start liking you, so don't expect me to be your friend. Right, so let me get into the explanation. This is definitely for two people who are estranged from each other. You are either at a physical or an emotional distance from your person. You guys are in separation. And for some reason, this person thinks because during this separation, while you are apart from this person, you have been focusing on God first and yourself after. You have not necessarily been focusing on him or her. And because they're observing you, and make no mistake, this person is watching you. He or she is watching you at a distance. You don't know, but they're keeping tabs on you. And not in a creepy stalker way, but because they're head over heels in love with you and they just want to know. They want to know what's happening in your life. So this person has been watching you. For some of you, this person watches you every day. If you still have them in your contacts or if you still have them on social media, or even if you're not friends with them on social media, they will go to your page and look at you every day just to get a glimpse as to what is going on, what you're up to, if you're okay. And to them, for all intents and purposes, you seem like you're doing fine without them. And they don't understand that that's God. That it's because you're focused on God and on your goals and on yourself and improving yourself that you seem so satisfied with where you're at. They don't understand that the joy of the Lord is your strength. They need to get to that place where they don't give another human being that power to take away their joy because that's what's going on right now. They're at this place where they they feel so lonely and sad because you're not in their life. And they're giving you the power to take away their joy when really their focus should be on God. And this is part of the reason why God is allowing the separation. This person has to learn to lean on him, on God, and let God be the source of their joy. Not just put all of their their eggs into your basket. 
this is something that you learn not to do. So this is why you seem like you're thriving in the separation while they're not handling it very well. And they're not handling it very well. It goes without saying. So they've interpreted your joy and your self-satisfaction in you following the Lord, focusing on the Lord and on you and self-improvement. They're interpreting that as, oh, she or he must have found somebody else. They can't be that happy and that pleased with themselves and they must have found somebody else. They're probably not in love with me anymore. And that's what they're thinking. So that is where this part comes in. Oh, where is it? Let me see. I stop dropping by without an appointment because I hear laughter coming through your door. And sometimes this person just goes by where you live and they are so in a state of heartbreak and overthinking that they will literally see and hear things that are not there. So if they are going past your apartment or past your house, the first thing they're going to think is they may have seen a shadow in your window. They may have heard something sounding like faint, distant laughter coming from you and somebody else. This stuff is all in their head. I'm not saying that they're going crazy or that they're losing it, but this stuff is all in their head. The enemy is messing with this person's mind, making this person think that they're, they, they're, they're, they've been long forgotten and that you've moved on. And so this person, in their mind, they're thinking, at some point, they're going to see you again. At some point, the two of you are going to talk. You're going to hear from each other. But if you've moved on, the, the most they can be to you is a friend, and they don't want that. They're so in love with you that it would be impossible for them to be your friend. They wouldn't be able to stomach that, to see you being with somebody else, to see you happy with somebody else. And it's not that they begrudge you happiness. If you're happy with somebody else, they're going to try their best to be happy for you. But the hurt is going to be too great for them to stick around and be a part of it or watch it happen. Do you see what I'm saying? This person loves you that much that they cannot, they cannot see themselves regressing to just being a friend. And that's it. And this could be even if you and this person weren't official. You know how they feel about you. They know how you feel about them. And so they can go back to that point where the two of you just pretend like you don't have those feelings for each other. They want it all with you or they don't want anything at all. They want you completely as a partner, to marry them, all of the above. They don't want just friendship. They can't handle just being friends with you. Let me see here. What else? Even though it says here, let's let the story kind of end. They may be thinking, well, if she's got somebody else or he's got somebody else, the best thing for me to do is to walk away because I don't want to sit there and watch him or her love on somebody else. That's what they're thinking. But the story isn't ended here because sooner or later, God will allow him or her to find out that you do not, in fact, have somebody else, that you are still single and you have just been focusing on God and on yourself. And they're going to take a page from that and begin to work on themselves and focus on God as well while repairing things with you. And even though they might be saying that let things come to an end, maybe let's just let things kind of come to an end, that's not what they want. That is not what they want and that's not what God wants. And sooner or later, the pull to you is going to be too strong for them to stay away. They're going to have to come back because God put it in them to come back to you. So I hope that this message blessed someone. I hope it cleared some things up for someone. I love you guys. I will be back with another word as soon as the Lord releases me. And by the way, the link to the lyrics to this song is going to be in the description box. God bless.